Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Linda Grizzly, and she is a money mindset mentor, and she helps especially high-income professionals, female professionals, learn how to um, repair their relationships with money and uh, overall talk, rewrite the scripts and create money abundance. We're gonna It's going to be a fantastic discussion for the audience, and I'm happy to welcome Linda to the show. Welcome, Linda. Thanks. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So kind of set the stage, talk about how you got there, what you do, just very briefly, one to two minutes, and um, how the audience can benefit from your expertise. So I grew up in a middle, in a lower middle class household. My parents didn't really talk about money. I didn't learn very much about money. Um, I know that they live paycheck to paycheck, and that's pretty much what I did for most of my life. Um, until I realized that I needed to make a drastic change because, it, you know, I started to realize like my future wasn't going to be anything except for working and working hard and working extra jobs and always trying to keep up. So I, I went through a transformational process myself, um, very big growth development, internal and external phase. And during that time, I realized now that I had unwittingly rewrote my whole money story on my own. And I didn't even know what a money story was. So I became a financial planner and I started having clients that I would see and I would talk to them and I would explain things to them and why things were right for them. And they just weren't seeing it. They had these internal obstacles themselves where they they would say, well, my father always said to do this or my brother is doing this. And I would try to explain to them, well, you're not your father. You didn't grow up in the same period that your father did. You're not your brother. You don't have the same financial place as he does. And I started to think about the whole idea of a money mindset. And then I really started just to delve into studying it and found that there's this whole other psychological side to finances, right? So whether it be in budgeting, cash flow, planning, whatever it happens to be, So what I did was I created a course outside of my financial planning business that is solely focused on uh, changing or recognizing your money mindset and understanding how it affects the things that you do every day with money. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I'm always studying trends and like the first trend was like, because growing up, um, you know, my grandparents were like um, social security. They were like, that's the thing. And then next, my parents were like a high paying job, 401ks. And then next, I realized that none of that really works. And um, it's like uh, now you can't even depend upon, uh, you know, job security. Um, And even you talked about working, you know, uh, you know, that's only going to do enough. You can, I mean, you're not going to get rich by working, even with a high paying job because of the taxes. So, um, so talk about um, one thing I'm interested in is um, so this uh, understanding money mindset and explain what money mindset means, why it's important, and uh, like kind of talk about some of the common themes and stories that um, hinder you from uh, financial abundance. Sure. So yeah. your money mindset is unique to every single person, and it's created by your life experiences going all the way back to when you were a baby or little. It's the things that you experienced in the household that you grew up in and how the people that you lived with interacted with money. Did they argue over money? Did they just spend money frivolously? Did they save too much? Were they stingy? You know, um, all those things. And then also your first experiences with money, how you first started to earn money and what what the, what the people were telling you uh, in your first jobs. Like, are you worthy of earning this money or what story is you're telling yourself? All of these things are about your money mindset. So in talking about, you know, people who are uh, higher income earners, they might think, well, I'm earning enough income. I, my money mindset is fine. So sometimes it's about your worth and sometimes it's about how you spend your money or how you save your money and understanding what things are, are triggering you to do things that you do and really doing that internal work and uncovering the the psychological aspects of what are how how your relationship with money is. And I'm not a psychologist. Um, I'm just a, a regular person who who does financial planning and also has a, a coaching uh, business. But um, 
I use a psychological assessments in my course that were created by psychologists from over 40 years worth of experience. So I have the backing of that. And then I help walk people through that process of the results of those assessments and what they mean and how they can start to recognize what's happening in their minds when they're dealing with money. Yeah. So my follow-up question is, um, you know, with as a money mindset coach, what are some common limiting beliefs about finances that you've encountered in particular? Like, uh, I want to kind of make it easy for the audience. So for example, like the rich are, uh, the rich are corrupt or the rich are greedy or uh, money doesn't grow on trees. So some things like that. And how can individuals begin to identify and transform these limiting beliefs? Sure. So most of those things that you just mentioned are things that I would call negative money stories. So um, your beliefs can be about money can be internal or external. So when I say internal, that's like, I'll never be rich, or I'm terrible with money, or money is just difficult, or money is something that people argue over. Those are all like internal stories that you tell yourself about your relationship with money. And then there's the external stories that are you know, uh, money is the root of all evil, or, you know, rich people are greedy. Um, And it's the external things that you say about money that give you an excuse for not being rich. And all of those are negative money stories. So in working on challenging those negative money money stories and understanding like what you're saying to yourself and about the world is part of the perception of money. And even if you think that it's not affecting your relationship money, with money, it is, right? Mm. So we want to start reframing that and acknowledging that you have these negative beliefs because, you know, people might might say that, well, that's not a negative belief. It's just the way that it is. Well, it is a negative <laughs> belief. Um, you know, and, and there are many people that have money that do great things with money. So money is not the root of all evil. And mm-hmm. there are many people that, you, you know, that that weren't good with money who who maybe just had a really bad experience, which caused them to not be good with money. But that doesn't mean that they're always not going to be good with money. So it's, it's reframing those things and, and taking action towards being more positive around that. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things you brought about was uh, awareness. And, um, you know, I think the first thing is becoming aware of your thoughts and perceptions and where they're coming from, your triggers. And how do individuals begin to identify, transform, and then some strategies for rewriting negative money scripts? Right. So besides working with a coach or going through a course, <laughs> Um, the best thing to do is just start recognizing, like be really mindful of what's happening in your interactions with money. If you notice that you use your online shopping has increased, you know, what's going on in your head that's causing that to happen. You know, um, if you're impulse buying more than you usually do, or you find yourself going to the store to escape, you know, go shopping to escape, um, you know, people more do it on their, on their screens now than they used to actually go somewhere, but it can still be that, you know, just starting to recognize those behaviors um, or starting to think like when you start to get too stingy, when you're like, okay, I just need to save money, but then you're, you're sacrificing your life and you're not enjoying your life and you're, you know, you're not living. Um, That's also another way that, that you can recognize that, you know, you're not having a good relationship with money. So recognition is the first part and, and working with a coach or, or even, you know, looking stuff up online can help you with that, but um, recognizing it and then figuring out how you can take action to start changing that would be the first step. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, when you say changing, I know because you're a coach and you work with clients, you know, you don't have to spill the beans, but share some, you know, strategies for rewriting. Is it uh like, you know, I'm, I know some people undergo hypnosis, some people do breath therapy, trauma work. Uh, what, what, do, what are your strategies? So mostly what we do is a lot of journaling, getting inside your head. So when, when clients take the assessments, there's written feedback that comes back, but there's a lot of journaling and, and there's some journaling that just comes from them straight. And then there's like guided journaling. Um, where there's specific questions that I ask that are in the journal where they can like reflect on that. The biggest thing that I see is when people first start, I start asking them about what their first experiences with money were talking about that, 
like what we said before about their relationships with money when they were growing up and how their parents or whoever they lived with re reacted to money and with them related to money. And it's it's amazing how many people start to recognize that they carried over some of that, that they carried over those things. Like I had one client who said that um, she was only allowed to go shopping once a year for new school clothes. So she got new clothes like once a year. By the time it was time to buy school clothes, they were all, you know, she had been wearing the same clothes for a year. And yeah, her mother went and bought and spent money on clothes all the time on herself. So she felt like that she was unworthy. And she realized going through the course that, oh my gosh, I am doing all these things for other people, but I'm not doing anything for myself. You know, and she realized that she had carried that over. And then I've had other people who are like, my parents were so stingy. They didn't, they didn't give me any money for anything. I had to work for everything. I had to you know, and so they're like, now that I have my own job, I just spend money on whatever I want because they had the, so they're going to the opposite extreme. So you can, it can go both ways. Um, so journaling, working through those stories. Um, and then some, there's some meditation, some guided meditation that's optional, which I, I always recommend doing that. And then just, you know, really finding space to really pay attention to that relationship. Because your relationship with money is as important as any other relationship in your life because we deal with money every day. Um, so treating it like it's a relationship with uh, a friend or a family member and really paying attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. It's, you know, always for, for me, it was always, you know, money was extremely important because I didn't grow up with it. My parents didn't have any. So I had to, I was forced to look for ways to, you know, it forced me to, you know, see the world differently in, you know, from that lens, um, you know, become, you know, more savvy. So the other question is, um, so this, uh, why, I think this is kind of a redundant question, but why is it important for women to focus on their money mindset and financial empowerment? And uh, what steps can women take to build financial confidence and independence? So I think it's important for women mainly because we were brought up, most of us anyway, we're brought up to not think about money or to let somebody else handle our money for us. And the reality is, is that most of us are going to have complete financial responsibility at some point in our lives. And mm. it's it's the fear of the unknown that makes it scary. So if you start to educate yourself and you know, you know, a little bit more about money, a little bit more about uh I won't say budgeting, but cash flow and how money coming in and money going out works and how you can, you know, structure that so that you're you have a good savings plan or plan for your future. Then once you start to understand it and really pay attention to it, it doesn't become as scary because you don't have that fear of the unknown. And then even talking about like investing and, and just learning a little bit more about what that is and what different accounts mean and how they work. It's super important because because at some point you're going to have complete responsibility for finances. Yeah. It reminds me because I, I still encounter uh, female clients that are like, yeah, the man should pay for everything. Yeah. My, yeah. Yeah. Her husband's going to take care of her. And then like the husband ends up divorcing her and leaving her for someone else. And she, you know, she had nothing. And it's like kind of these old school ideas, like depending on a job or social security. So it's like kind of like, um, and then plus divorce rate, people aren't marrying, people aren't having kids. So, you know, it's time to kind of um, upgrade those. What are some common uh, mindsets, particularly for women around money that uh, the audience should be aware of? So, you know, I'm not sure that there's any that are particularly around money. Uh, I'm sorry, around women. But I, I want to I want to talk about the the money scripts. So Brad Klontz is a financial psychologist and he wrote a bunch of books, but he identified four basic categories of money scripts. So there's money avoidance, money worship, money status, and money vigilance. So these are the four that people tend to fall into, men and women, but there can be overlap too. But money avoidance is like when people are are usually comes from people that are raised in low income or economically disadvantaged areas. Mm -hmm. And they think these are the people that think that money is corruptive and that rich people are greedy and it leads to taking pride in living with less money and it, it helps people feel better about their situation. So it just like, mm -hmm. it just perpetuates that poverty cycle within families. And then money worship, I think is where 
um, where maybe people tend to uh, go when they have higher incomes because then money becomes paramount and they want to have like money will solve all their problems or lead to satisfaction and happiness and fulfillment. Well, money doesn't solve all the problems. Sometimes it, it can, you know, make things a little bit easier, but it doesn't bring us fulfillment or meaning in life. And I think that some people think like, if I could only make so much money, my life would be better. Um, and, and that's not necessarily true. So understanding that and figuring out that you need to find that happiness from within and that money is a piece of that, but it's not the the whole answer. And then money status is, uh, you know, the keep up with the Joneses mindset where like, you know, you might have somebody who looks like they are super successful on the outside. You know, they might have a nice house, a nice car, they might dress well, um, but really they could have like a ton of credit card debt and, and other like detrimental financial habits because they're just spending all this money, even though they're not really wealthy. They might have cash flow coming in, but they're not saving anything. Um, so it's you want to be sure that you are setting yourself up where where you you are going to succeed if you lose that income stream coming in. Um, and you can think of like people who've won the lottery or people who have, uh, um, you know, like pro athletes or people who have had money at one time and then all of a sudden they don't and mm -hmm. they're broke because they spent all this money and they weren't thinking of the future. And then that last one, money vigilance is like a, a totally cautious approach towards money and financial manners. And it, it's it's being like super highly attentive to your finances and and planning for the future and being planning oriented, which sounds wonderful. But if you go too far on that extreme, then you might actually have like being too careful and too frugal and you can have a super high net worth, um, but you might be living in poverty like because you're just afraid to spend your money. So you got to find like the right balance between all of those things. Those are the four that Brad Klontz like separated out but i think we all fall somewhere within there and the idea is to find a good balance between things so that you're not any extreme of those yeah yeah all those um archetypes that you're discussing brought up so many um analogies and stories I, I knew one person uh she would go to the grocery store and in like in like a price difference like of uh, like 50 cents uh she, she would just get so anxious and just get caught up and you know should you <laughs> and then uh you know even you mentioned pro athletes even doctors are going broke um celebrities uh lawyers um so it's not just but uh so really interesting so um i really enjoyed this discussion I'm sure the audience is interested in finding out more about you. How can they check out your socials, reach out to you, and so on? Yeah, sure. So my website is money mindsetandmoney.com. And if you put a slash PO, POD for podcasts, there's a, a special offer, a couple of freebie downloads on there. Um, so you can check that out. Um, love to have some of your, your listeners in my course. And yeah. other than that, they can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. On LinkedIn, I have a little bear next to my name, Linda Grizzly. So that's usually the easiest place to find me. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And for all the audience, um, let's thank Linda for coming on and give her socials a like and follow. Um, and uh, check out the books that she mentioned by uh, Grizzly. And uh, with that, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.